Hi, I'm Sharon Schoenborn. I'm the director for the small, medium, and corporate business at Microsoft Australia. And it's my pleasure to be here today um, with Mark from Redback Boots and Marcus from Webvine, a partner of uh, Microsoft, to really discuss how Redback have leveraged technology to really transform the way that they're engaging with customers. And I've been so impressed with the work that you've done, Mark. Um, your business has been delivering high quality boots for over a century to not only your Australian customers, but now internationally. I would love if you could just introduce your, your role and um, a little bit about Redback. Sure, um, well my name's Mark Cloris. I'm uh, co-founder and director of Redback with my brother. And uh, yeah, we've uh, been manufacturing as you know for a long time and uh, uh, history from our uh, five generations of bootmakers from Greece uh, and joining with uh, a great local manufacturer, the Queensland Boot Co-op that started in the 1880s. Uh, and we brought that together uh, to create uh, a red back and, um, and really hit the world. So we're, we're very proud of what the guys have done. That's wonderful. And you've been working together with Marcus from Webvine, who is a Microsoft partner of ours. Maybe just share a little bit about your, your organization, Marcus. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm the founder and uh, uh, director of Webvine, and we started about eight years ago. And so we love helping our clients achieve digital transformation, you know, so they can achieve the goals business goals that they really want to achieve. And we, we do that with Microsoft Technologies as a Microsoft Partners, and that, that, that works really well. Mark, could you tell us a bit more about Redback, the size of your company and the markets that you serve? Sure, uh, well Redback, um, we're very much focused on our Australian business as a start. We supply all the combat footwear to all the Australian military, um, a lot of EMS type footwear as well. A lot of the rural markets uh, we do, uh, work boots and safety boots. Uh, but critically, we export to over 20 different countries around the world, uh, and we're really focused on having the latest technology with our technology partners. So we work with uh, ABB in Europe, uh, Klockner Desma, Vibram, Gore-Tex, just making sure we've got you know, state-of-the-art equipment would help us be um, you know, productive and competitive. And that's really interesting because, Mark, for some time you've been leveraging technology to transform your manufacturing operations. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you're now working with Marcus to transform the way that you're engaging with your customers? Sure. Uh, well, we've really looked at the way in which we've been doing our business and it's not just enough to make a good boot and have good relationships that we could see in this growth phase that we're coming up to now having moved to a new plant. We'll be doubling production um, from 750,000 pairs a year to one and a half million pairs a year here. And uh, we just knew that it wasn't just boots on ground, that we needed to have you know, good information systems and we needed someone to help us pull it together. That's fantastic. And Marcus, that's the work that you've been helping Redback with. Can you help me understand a little bit about the business problem um, as you've seen it and what you're looking to solve? Sure. Uh, well, it's very exciting actually because uh, Marx already has this fantastic company that's been established for a long time and obviously very successful in Australia and around the world. And, and when, uh, when we met with Mark and the team, they just really wanted to grow, you know, like that, that capacity, like moving to a new plant, being able to produce so many more boots, and they want to be able to um, fill their markets, you know, with those boots. And so our, our role really is to help them to facilitate that to happen, you know, through enabling technology to identify emerging markets, identify opportunities where they can grow into and expand, and, um, and just be there providing the ability for them to do what they, what they really want to do. Mark, I might just have you speak to the solution that you helped to enable for Redback then in terms of the, the way that you've looked to approach um, customer relationship management and really the insights that that is helping to Redback to be able to now glean in the way that they're managing the operations. Sure. Um, look, what we always look at is the, uh, it's not, we don't, we don't come with a technology-led solution. The technology is very important to have these amazing platforms that Microsoft can provide, but then it's the ability to have a look at, what, at each client and their specific needs. And so what we could tell with Redback is um, they need to be able to capture information very quickly on the fly, if they're on, on the road, on the tablet, on their phone, recording information about customers and what's happening. So then later on they can digest this information and, and look at opportunities you know, that, they're, that they're not capturing, that they're missing out on. And, um, and so that approach has led us to be able to create a solution that's working now really, really well for them. And, and the, the ability of 
Dynamics and Microsoft platforms that are so flexible that you can create that, ex that perfect experience you know, for what you guys need in particular, which might be different for another client, but it, it allows us to be able to uh, do that so then you can go, go ahead and, and you know, do the role that you need to do. Yeah. So Mark, can you tell us a bit more about how the solution has changed the way that you manage the operations and, and especially interested in how are employees embracing the change? Uh, it's, it's something they're excited about. There's been a little bit of um, uh, unbelief that it could deliver so much. So we have our challenge is to sort of walk people along um, and particularly with our employees being able to understand more about our customers and particularly one of the things that we like is that whether it's you know, a seasoned sales rep or someone you know, from the other side, you know, could be in Perth, you can actually go in and see someone's cool point of sale, or take a photo of it on their, on their phone or their tablet, it gets uploaded so that the girls who are doing the customer service can go, oh wow, we saw your new point of sale or we saw that promotion or whatever, and it actually gets the relationship a lot closer. And that's, that's kind of been cool. Um, we're only just getting into that, but that's what we see, particularly with our export markets, gives a lot of buy-in and builds relationships. It sounds like it's really changed the way that you're not only engaging with your customers and also the retail stores, but the experience that your employees are having. Um, could you help maybe share a bit more also about how are you leveraging the data and the new insights that the solution is enabling for you? I think it helps us um, uh, plan our resources a lot better that we're understanding now where markets are wanting to go and, um, and really getting a better understanding of, as opposed to what uh, values that we think they're gonna value, it's actually getting feedback from them as well. Um, and being able to quantify it too. Um, a lot of times there'll be new products and new opportunities that, that sound really exciting and sexy, but when you actually drill down, there's not the value in it or not sustainability in it. So this gets us to um, really verify you know, opportunities and, and just sort of make sure that it's not something that's just been blown up on a whiteboard or a PowerPoint presentation, it's something we can't deliver on. And Mark, how do you look at the return in, on investment? You know, the impact that that's having for the firm? Uh, I think the first issue we have is obviously getting management uh, involved in it and being able to understand that there'll be a, a certain return, obviously. Any time that, you know, software or systems that aren't Jermaine to what they do, they'll say, well, why do we have to spend so much money and, and how is it going to work? So what we look at is by being able to chunk the process down. It gives us any opportunity to say, well, okay, well, if we do this, there'll be either these savings, but also with working with the ERP side of, the, of uh, Dynamics, it gives us the opportunity to say, okay, well, if we invest this now, we'll be able to sell X amount more product. These are the profits we're going to make. So by this investment, we'll return this. Whereas in the past, it was very, very difficult to track um, what was actually contributing it to it. Was it just a good product and it would have done anyway? Uh, and, and where does the communication make a difference? So um, this is, um, yeah, it just makes it much easier to justify it to the team. That's great. Can you tell me about the first time both of you met and that first conversation around you know, what might be possible for us, you know, what's, what's the challenge you're trying to, to solve? And, and you know what what happened next to really form and ideate the outcome that you that you're now um, experiencing. After you, Marcus. Um, look, when we met Redback, uh, obviously they're an I iconic uh, Australian brand, and uh, especially coming to visit their facility, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, in Alexandria and Sydney, is, is very exciting uh, for us to, to see how it all worked and and very unique kind of client. And so we really, we really uh, hit it off very quickly. And the thing that we focus on really is, again, uh, not so much just about technology for the sake of technology, but really trying to understand the business drivers. And, and Mark and the team had a very clear goal. You know, they had, as you mentioned, um, gone to a new facility. Their production capacity is much greater. And to be able to fill the markets with that capacity. And so that was very clear from the outset as to what the business goals are. Sometimes. Uh, we see companies coming with a technology um, uh, game only. You know, they want to upgrade technology and it might be driven by IT, but it's much better if there's a business driver behind it and it's very clear. So when the business outcomes are clear and measurable, then it makes it a, a, a lot better because we can show what we're doing with the technology and we can measure the, 
measure the results. Right. It's not enough just to put in some technology by itself. It's got to produce something. And, um, and that's what we're about, and that's what we're doing with Redback. And I think that's why it's going really well. That's great. So what's next? What's the roadmap um, beyond this point in terms of expanding the solution or the, the possibilities that you've discussed together? Well, we were just even chatting earlier. Um, there's a lot now that, that Redback are getting excited about. You know, they already had some plans, like we were going to, um, you know, obviously the ERP needs to be upgraded to Dynamics 365, and there's a bunch of technical things that need to happen, you know, running certain reports and dashboards, um, being able to work more with the distributors. Mm -hmm. And now Mark's been identifying some other global opportunities as well because of the technology they can see the opportunities that these opportunities are kind of appearing did you want to talk to that mark sure i think uh, for us we're saying uh, the biggest challenge for us is the fact that uh, getting up to the original stage we uh, the business there was a risk of it becoming almost fat dumb and happy we were quite profitable really for probably the last 10 years we could not make enough boots so there was an investment in you know, marketing and in, in you know, CRM and relationships and understanding about the market. So over our time, we've invested tens of millions of dollars in uh, robotics and the latest manufacturing equipment. But as I said, not being able to make enough boots, we, we, we thought, that, well, this is great. We didn't need to invest in this other side of the business. Whereas now we have doubled the capacity. We're now saying, well, look, what markets we want to go into, how will we actually make that happen? And as Marcus walked in and had a look. He said, well, look, I can see where the manufacturing's happening, but you've only got six people in the office. Um, and out of our hundred odd people, there are only actually probably four or five that actually aren't on the production floor at a lot of times. And that's all the sales and marketing, production, everything. So our model isn't then putting on, you know, lots of people to do things. We want to see how can we do this most efficiently. Um, and I had a, a a vision in my head of how it could actually work and really until recently um, the uh, IT weren't able to offer for a business our size um, a capability that uh, didn't have a room full of computers and, and IT guys so it was much more accessible now. So Mark one of the things you mentioned earlier is um, you know the the knowledge that lies within the organization and also where that you look to collaborate across your organization with customers. Can you help me understand how the solution allows you to transfer that knowledge, but also the way that you look to collaborate with customers? Sure, I think our, our biggest challenge was trying to meet people where they were at. And um, particularly with um, you know, you know, older customers that are still getting used to their smartphones and things like that. And you've got younger customers are gonna really take it on board. Some that are bought into technology more than others. So being able to meet them where they're at and to show and to give them things that they see a difference in. So whether it's being able to um, uh, share their experiences with you know returns or faulty goods or something like that, they can actually take a photo of it, send it to you in real time. This is what it looks like. That makes a big difference. Um, and uh, so for us, that's is and will be the biggest challenge to be able to make it happen on the various levels of engagement with the guys, yeah. And I think, I think to their credit, that's something Redback really took on. You know, we, we see a lot of times where technology solutions just get implemented and then they're not successful because they might be a bit too sophisticated for the end users or something like that, you know. And so instead, we just really tried to understand the audience and who was going to be using these solutions and how they were going to be using them and then um, make it a, a more a simple you know, usable mm -hmm. experience and I think that's that's what's working um, you know across and of course we can have all these fantastic infrastructure with Dynamics CRM and or Dynamics 365 and, and SharePoint and Office 365 supporting all of that but to the uh, to the user they don't really even need to know all of that's there they just they just know what they're doing and it's very simple and easy for them to do and that that seems to work really well and, and you know to microsoft's credit i mean uh the the technology platforms that are available for us as a partner to leverage we can create so much better solutions so much faster now um, that can help these kind of situations so initially we weren't talking about iso uh, certification but when mark and the team brought it up it's very easy for us to, to work with that. Mm -hmm. With the existing platforms, you know, we don't need to go buying some other product or doing some other thing. Just tying into the existing platforms that are there, 
in, and just tailoring that experience very quickly to provide that level uh, of quality assurance that, that these guys need to meet. So that, that's a great uh, thing about being a consultancy, technology consultancy these days is the platforms that Microsoft have created allow us to do so much more, so much faster for the clients. That's great. So Mark, what's next for Red Back Boots? What's, what's, um, what aspirations do you have for the next three to five years? Well, next, well we'd, we'd like to uh, fulfill the capacity investments uh, we've made, but we want to do it in markets that are long term and value what we want. And I think it's um, uh, a challenge in that a lot of business that come through the door and some business, if it's not quality business, you might make money. You've got to, learning how to say no is hard when you're in a growth mode. Um, the other thing is to just arriving back from uh, the US yesterday, I read a review of a book that spoke about what got you here won't get you there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, it actually really got me thinking, mm -hmm. saying, okay, well, look, how are we going to do things different? Mm -hmm. um, so part of it, we want to transport what we're modeling here to our uh, uh, overseas markets, particularly the US, where we have uh, 50,000 square foot facility in Escondido, uh, which is north of San Diego. Um, and they desperately need the sort of things we're doing here. So we're hoping with, with all your guys' help mm -hmm. uh, to be able to take that forward because there's um, yeah, huge opportunities there. Mm -hmm. We look forward to that. Yeah. It's been a real pleasure having a chance to, to spend time with both of you, hear your story, Mark, and also what your aspirations are. And certainly, Mark, is from your perspective, you know, the ability to really understand the unique requirements for the business and be able to shape a solution that's helping to engage with customers in different ways, to be able to share knowledge across the organization and be able to really meet the customers where they're at in terms of their own transformation, leveraging technology. It's been a real pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.